Hello, everybody. Um, we're going to get started. Uh, I'll give a, a, a quick introduction of, of who we are and what we're going to talk about to kick things off. Um, my name is Andrew Maines. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Mobile Roadie. Uh, we are a direct-to-consumer uh, mobile platform that powers um, several thousand artist apps uh, that ultimately go down to about 30,000 individual users. And um, the context for today, we're going to deep dive into how one artist uses mobile inside the, the greater scope of a direct-to-consumer campaign. Um, and I brought with me uh, today Michael Feibach from Famehouse, um, a great digital agency, and Kevin Wardis from Girly Action, who is um, involved in Amanda Palmer and some other great artists. Because um, the platform is really just some, one, one piece of the picture of any great campaign, and he wanted to sort of touch base with, um, you know, sort of where the rubber hits the road, where is, you know, great execution, which is critical, um, and also artist and management participation, which is everything. Um, because otherwise, it is really just digital tools and content. Um, and, you know, with, with like sort of a lot of the personality and passion taken out of it. Um, so with that, I'll let the other, these other guys introduce themselves, and then we'll get started. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, my name is Michael Feeback, and uh, as Andrew said, I run Famehouse, which is a digital marketing agency. We run digital marketing operations for Shady Records, Eminem's label, DJ Shadow, Pretty Lights. Amanda, we work with Amanda Palmer and Girly Action. Um, so we're kind of a one-stop digital marketing shop for the music industry. Hey, I'm uh, Kevin Wardis. I'm from Girly Action Marketing and Media. I'm a partner and I run the label services division. We do handle management and label services for Amanda um, in that we, we're her artist manager, but we also run her label and in conjunction with Mike handle all of the, the digital uh, facilitation of her message and, and communication with fans. Great, all right, so the, we were gonna kick off, I mean, this first slide, um, I'm just gonna give to Michael and, and Kevin, um, just sort of a quick overview of Amanda Palmer and her approach to direct-to-consumer. Kev, before I kind of dive into the app specifically, do you wanna just give everyone just a rundown of Amanda and kind of what she stands for and her ethos? Yeah, um, Amanda Palmer spent years now developing a relationship with fans which has largely uh, used social media as the vehicle for discussion. Twitter, she's got I think 600,000 Twitter followers, uh, Facebook obviously as well. Um, and what she's cultivated over the years and part of the reason or a large reason why she's been so successful in this realm in terms of crowdsourcing and uh, the use of, of, of apps is she's got this incredible relationship that she values enormously with her fans, and it is truly a two-way conversation. Um, despite the fact that there's 600,000 plus Twitter followers, pretty much anybody that reaches out to her on Twitter is getting a personal response, getting engagement, and that's a big part of her ethos from constant communication um, about everything, the way she's feeling, which is not necessarily for every artist, to giving away her music for free, to being completely agnostic about how people consume her music or doing free shows, what she calls ninja gigs. Um, and she really will put out the word, whatever she's doing, a call to action online. And that fan base is um, really a big part of her, her family and who she is. Amanda with, uh, is not Amanda Palmer without that fan base. And many of you probably have heard of her from raising $1.5 million on Kickstarter? Uh, just under $1.2. $1.2 million on Kickstarter last year, um, which was really generated from the core of this diehard fan base and then kind of blew up from there, it seemed like. So uh, that was obviously a really interesting case study to see how diehard fans and super fans can kind of start uh, a viral campaign, uh, such as a Kickstarter campaign. So um, before Amanda's recent tour, uh, I was talking with Vicky, who's Amanda's manager at Girly Action, and Kevin about how we could harness her, her community uh, for this tour that she was doing uh, across the United States. So, um, you know, the first thing I brought up was Mobile Roadie because uh, they, the application is built for fan engagement. It's really what it's built for. It's a place for fans to go and interact with each other in real time at the shows, after the shows, before the shows, um, and it, we thought it was the perfect platform. So uh, we used her, her strong community of fans and, and, and built this platform. Um, in four months, she's got over 13,000 downloads. Um, there's over one million section views. 
Uh, over 2,000 emails have been collected uh, for her mailing list through the application, uh, over 100,000 audio plays, um, and uh, her most popular sections are, are the comments section and the music section. Um, she gets 49,000 section views weekly, uh, an average of 3,100 uniques. Um, and I, you know, I think generally she sees an extremely high engagement on her application. So the, the, the thing I think to take away from some of these statistics is, um, you know, she's you know, at the very beginning of a, of a mobile app campaign, only four months in, um, and 13,000 downloads you know, really represents a fraction of her active fan relationships at this stage. And of course, it will continue to grow quickly over time. But even only at 13,000, if you look at you know, 1.1 million section views um, and you know, over 100,000 audio plays, what you start to notice is that the, you know, sort of where the mobile app, the native mobile app fits in is like super engaging the super fan. So they tend to be you know, the, the, early, the early engaged, um, you know, fans who are the most likely to be true evangelists of, of your, you know, of your art and, you know, of your shows and of your commerce and everything else. So it is really sort of a, a powerful engine for, um, you know, driving those relationships. Uh, and you can see, you know, it's great distribution globally, uh, which is a nice thing. another nice thing about, you know, native apps is people who are going to struggle to be able to see you live in concert or find any other way to really deeply engage with fans, wind up with a, a great home base. Um, and to back to you, uh, Michael, about sort of the, the overall integration. So we, we use, is my mic on, can you hear me? Microphone. So we use the uh, mobile roadie application um, to kind of drive attention to all of Amanda's other properties. Um, obviously her website's extremely active, her social media is extremely active, and the mobile app acts as a hub that kind of pulls in the activity from all these places. So all of the news items going on the website can interact with the mobile application. All of the activity on Twitter, which as Kevin said, she's extremely active on Twitter, also shows up on the application. So it's a mobile hub for all of her social and, and web activity. Um, which can be extremely powerful because, again, those 13,000 plus people who have the application are her diehard fans. So if they're tracking everything in their pocket, that's going to make everything else that much more powerful. Um, so we didn't just build a, a mobile application. We, we decided we wanted to take it to the next level. Um, uh, we integrated the, the mobile app with her website, and uh, uh, um, we let people obviously download the app from her website. I should say it's also available on Android, so it's Android and iPhone. Um, and then if, if anyone hits the, the website from their iPhone or Android device, they get a prompt to download the application, which, which increases app downloads, obviously. Um, the key, uh, it's a, not on either. This is the good one. Um, the, uh, you know, Typically, with, with you know artists across the board, um, across the you know the thousands that we we are powering, the average um, is now up to about 25% of these artists' website traffic is coming from a mobile phone, um, and that is up from about 15% this time last year, and our and we are starting to see it accelerate, and our, our assumption is that you know relatively soon it is going to tip in favor of mobile phones, which is of course where places like businesses like Facebook already are, is that the you know more than 50% of their usage is phone. So, um, you know, having a, a beautiful mobile experience uh, is critical because they either are going to bounce off of a, a you know, difficult to use website um, on their phone, even if it's mobile optimized, or you take the opportunity to install on their phone and engage with them sort of in a, in a much deeper and more permanent way. I also want to point out that there, there's some important applications to the app that are not duplicated on the website at all. Um, part of the uh, success of the comments, a lot of those comments are not comments to Amanda. What this is is her fan base residing in her big tent talking to each other. So there's all kinds of conversation. Who's going to the Chicago show? Who can give me a ride from St. Louis? And what it, it does is it enables a, uh, a community that isn't really going to happen in the same way on the website. Yeah. But yeah it's, it, we were taken, as we were deep, deep diving into all the content, you know, everyone that works at Mobile Roadie was sort of taken with how her fan base in particular treats one another. Um, and it is nice for fans, especially those types of fans, to have a sort of walled off environment that feels more private. 
Um, no, yeah, I think all that's, that's those are all good points. Um, and, and I think uh, what, what we did was we leveraged that extremely active fan community um, and built a custom web application that then synced with the, app, with the mobile application. So any photo that's taken on the app syncs to the website. We created a gallery section that uh, highlighted the most uh, liked photos on the application, as well as the most liked or hearted photos on Instagram and the most liked photos on Flickr. So there's a, a, a content hub for the best images of Amanda Palmer or Amanda Palmer related images on the internet living on her website, um, which drives a lot of traffic. It's great for SEO and also drives a lot of attention back to the mobile application. So we've created this kind of synergistic mobile to web, web to mobile conversation based around photos, which her fans are extremely active with. And an ever changing environment that's engaging that we don't actually have to do. The fans do it. Cool. So I'll, we don't have a ton of time, but I'll, I'll just touch on some of the, the native app features that Amanda used particularly well and that her fans use particularly well. Um, you know, what you're looking at here is a, a native view of, that offers a really sort of rich um, deep dive into information about each show. Um, in this particular view, you see that as many as 61 people were, are, are ch you know, actively checking in and indicating that they are going to a show in Chicago. Um, which of a, you know, a user base of only 13,000 in one city is really kind of extraordinary. Um, and these people are getting an, you know, an opportunity to engage further, meet each other at the show, share photos into the app, share content to each other you know, after the show. So there's a real sort of added value um, to the show itself uh, and a great opportunity for people to commune around that event. Um, push notifications is something that not everyone thinks about when they think about native apps, which is really, really critical. Um, Amanda's stats were outstanding for push notifications. She saw 86% of everyone who installed her app opted in for push. And for people who have ever worked hard to establish an email database, for example, you'll recognize right away that you know 86% versus you know how many people you can get to take an email from your website is really outstanding. Um, and even better than that, um, you know, she had as much as 72% opens of the push notification that she sent versus, and, I, and you guys know better, that, you know, Amanda, I think, is probably way over indexes for getting her emails opened. But across the entire world of artists, it typically sits at about 25%. Um, and it's a challenge to compete with all the other, you know, for everyone's work email and everything else that goes into their inbox. So push notification is a great way. You know, she used it. Oh, sorry, guys. Yeah, she, she used it really, really smartly. You know, things like encouraging fans just after they left a show in a particular market. Well, you know, if they were within a one mile radius of the venue, would get a push notification saying, please share what you did at the show. Please share your photos. Um, and people who, you know, she would then move market by market and hit people in there, you know, where they were standing today uh, and making sure they knew about the shows that were upcoming. It's an extremely powerful tool. I mean, you're, you're reaching people in their pocket. It shows up like a text message. You can geo-target it to any area. So we were literally pushing people at the show. So they, they'd get a message from Amanda Palmer when they're sitting in the crowd waiting for Amanda Palmer to come on stage on their phone, which is extremely powerful, um, and really increase the fan engagement around those show pages on the app. Um, you know, we, we've been talking a little bit about her fan wall. You know, the, the, certainly the notion of a bulletin board isn't, um, isn't anything new. Uh, but there is something great, you know, the, the nice thing about native app bulletin boards built in is that people are able to, ex for example, you know, sort by the people who are in my city, um, sort by people who are commenting on my comments. Um, and so it's a great sort of walled garden for, for fans to, to congregate. Um, so just in, in general, um, you know, the, the things that we were sort of special about this campaign um, were you know sort of critical attention to detail and quality control, um, and I think it is you know it is, it is uh, it's fun to watch artists take this element of of their business and their career this seriously, um, and sort of the, the the overall point of a native mobile app is is simply one cog in the wheel of the overall greater you know greater campaign. Um, you guys want is there anything? I'll give it to these guys. Any last comments, and then we only have a few more minutes, so we'll take some questions. Anything you want to add? Well, the one thing that I, that I want to add is that we we look at at uh, the various ways of communicating with fans on, on tiers, and you know, Amanda, we'll send an email out to this large email group two or three times a year. That's it. Our primary 
platform for communication is, is a more sort of accessible and friendly way here. The email we feel is, is for the most special announcements. We have a new record or there's something enormous happening um, and, and we get less traction from it as well. So I, I think it's important when you think about the way that fans are communicated to what is the most sort of precious private, which we look at it as email, and what's a more sort of uh, open way of communicating. It's an ongoing conversation, and you know, Mobile Roadie is, is one place where that ongoing conversation takes place. It also takes place on social media, um, and we've created various hubs for all of that content to be pulled through, so. Okay, anybody have any questions? Thank you. Uh, I have two questions. First is, uh, do you have a Spanish version of this app? Or is it still only English? All of our apps um, and all good apps use the, the local settings on the, the, the language settings on the phone. Okay. So all of the native language that is built into the app itself, um, in other words, title headings and everything, section names and everything else will automatically translate into Spanish and 20 other languages depending on the local settings on your phone. Okay, and the dashboard is in, in, might be in Spanish and then everybody receives in his own language, let's say. Yeah, I mean, naturally, once you, you know, if you're, if you're entering, you know, marketing text or, or a news item, that's not going to automatically translate, right? That has to be, you know, it's, it's going to be in whatever language you publish and hit send. But the actual architecture of the app will be viewed in whatever your native language is. Second quick, uh, quick question, if at any point the artist decides to close the app or to, to use another platform, uh, does he have any chance to get the database or the contacts of? Yeah, the, the you know, all company, well, all honest companies like ours, you know, the, it's not my data, it's, it's Amanda Palmer's data. Uh, and she can export that kind of content anytime that she wants and it's her property. Um, so artists, and, and that's how it should be. Artists should be able to, not, you know, even if they don't leave the platform, they should be able to take that data and, and you know, use it and integrate it and pool it with all of the other data that's in their Google Analytics and everything else they're using on a daily basis. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you. Uh, what should have at uh, least a good app for new musicians, in your opinion? Um, I mean, there, there's a lot of uh, you know options out there. I mean, uh, Mobile Roadie provides one. There's there's other companies as well, but there, there's a pretty affordable uh, way to make a mobile application at this point. I mean, what's your guys' baseline offering for a new musician? Um, I mean, we have, Mobile Roadie has, you know, mobile web products that go all the way down to $9 a month. Um, and native apps are, you know, for both Android and iPhone are $99 a month. Um, I think the, the criteria for someone who needs an app isn't so much the size of the artist. It's, it is how seriously you intend to take fan engagement. Um, there are very big artists who, you know, I would argue if they're not going to engage seriously with mobile may not make very good use of a mobile app. Um, and they may be better off just allowing their, you know, the, 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 you know, a Facebook page to take care of it. So it is, you know, it, it, but on the other hand, an artist who make, maybe might only be able to attract a few hundred fans to download an app, but is very serious about touring in their market and growing their career, right? you know, all, you know, every, the, the oldest trick in the record business, right, is that you're supposed to own the market where you're from. Right? It's, it's what every record label looks for, it's what every manager looks for, is how popular are you where you're from. So an artist who really is going to leverage their fans in a really big way and you know, is from New York City and wants to take over the imagination of all 200 of the fans that they do have today and really incentivize those fans to promote their shows and to promote their events and to evangelize them on Facebook and Twitter, a native app is an outstanding tool for it. I definitely think if you're touring, like having some sort of mo mobile presence is a must. And the tools through a mobile roadie application, especially push notifications, that's an extremely powerful tool if you're, if you're on the road. Yeah, hi. Uh, what's the, the main way that people get the app in the first place? What's the top three routes that they'll know how to have that app on their the phone? The, the top three are, well, you, I mean, the, the top, the, the very best is, you know, we, we publish a piece of JavaScript 
into your account that you put onto your website so that everyone who hits your website from a phone gets a pop-up offering you the app. That simple, what one simple action will convert. And again, we, we, we discussed earlier, that is probably about 25% of your total, total audience. That alone is you know, the, the most powerful. You know, simply tweeting about it, putting it on your Facebook page, you know, and keeping it omnipresent on your website are the, you know, the critical things. I've also seen artists have, you know, do a great, you know, a great business promoting it at their shows by simply doing in-house, you know, in-house banners that say, you know, everyone who has my app is going to get something extra for being here. Uh, it's a great, you know, great marketing tool. You can use QR codes for people to scan it and get direct access to download it on whatever device they're using. But I'd also say when you first release the app, make it an event. I mean, releasing an app is a big deal. So make it like, you know, promote it like you would promote a record, you know? And you can put um, exclusive content in the apps as well and lock it so people have to like your, like your Facebook page to get it, uh, to get the content or give an email address to get the content. So there's a lot of things you can do to incentivize people to download the app as well. We're down to the last seven seconds, so we, I think we're, we, we will be standing over at these, uh, these little white tables if you guys have any questions. I do one more over here. Uh, is this working? Okay, hi. Uh, just wanted to ask, what will happen when you will have like 30 of your favorite artists and each one of these will have an app for itself? You will just fill your phone up with different apps from different people and they will all give you push notifications at one point. How will this be different from Twitter? Wouldn't be Twitter better at managing this content? It, you, this, you know, I think if you've got 30 favorite bands, you're an extremely busy music lover. I mean, you know, that's, I think most people, you know, the answer is 30 is a lot. I think you know, we have lots of fans, though, who use 10, and if you're deeply engaged in that artist, that's nearly not that many apps. Mobile ready apps are incredibly small, right? So the, there isn't a memory issue. If you, you know, if you have 20 favorite bands, you probably want to be getting push notifications from all 20 of them if or you're deeply passionate. Or turn off the push notification on That's some right. of them. I mean, you can have the app and opt out of having information pushed to you. All right, thank you guys. Thanks, guys.